In this video, we'll look at the Heathkit SW717 general coverage receiver. We'll take a look at the history of the radio, its features, and take a look at it inside and out. I'll discuss the restoration of this particular unit and demonstrate it being operated. Heathkit was well known as the premier manufacturer of electronics and kit form from the 1950s into the early 1990s. Their product line included shortwave and amateur radio equipment. At any given time, Heathkit typically offered several shortwave receivers in different price ranges. The SW717 was a mid-range general coverage receiver covering the AM broadcast band and short wave up to 30 megahertz. It was offered from 1971 to 1982, initially at a price of $139.95, but later at lower prices. I've seen a 1979 catalog that listed it at $89.95. It's a solid state design using transistors and was designed to be a replacement for their older two-base GR64 receiver. The features and appearance are very similar to the GR64. It was not Heathkit's first solid state shortwave receiver. That honor goes to the GC1A Mohican, which I covered in another YouTube video. The successor to the SW717 was Heathkit's SW7800 in 1984, which featured a digital display and phase locked loop design and was sold until Heathkit exited the kit market. The SW717 is an all-solid-state portable superhet radio receiver. It weighs in at about 7 pounds and covers the following frequencies in four bands. Band A, 550 kHz to 1500 kHz, the AM broadcast band. Band B, 1.5 to 4 MHz, short wave. Band C, 4 to 10 MHz, short wave. And Band D, 10 to 30 MHz, short wave. The design uses nine transistors, of which two are field effect transistors and one a Darlington pair. It also has three ceramic IF filters. It's a single conversion superhead design using a 455 kHz IF frequency. It was a mid-range receiver in Heathkid's lineup. They didn't publish technical specs on the radio, but performance is typical of other radios of this vintage and price range. It features an illuminated slide rule dial, with uncalibrated band spread, S meter, internal speaker, and headphone jack that can drive low impedance headphones using a transformless output circuit. There's a ferrite rod antenna on the back that's used for the AM broadcast band and external antenna and ground connections for short wave. It has a switchable automatic noise limiter. He can receive AM signals and has a BFO for receiving single sideband and CW or Morse code signals. It can be powered only from the AC line, wired for either 120 or 240 volts AC, and takes about 8 watts of power. Like most Heath products, it was sold as a kit. The circuitry is contained on a printed circuit board, as well as some point-to-point -point wiring. It can be aligned with or without instruments. Let's take a look at the front panel. Tuning is shown on the illuminated slide rule dial with the four bands shown on separate scales. The dial includes indications of band portions like amateur, international broadcast, CB, and even WWV, the US government time station. It also has a log scale for recording positions in a log book. This was the last shortwave radio Heathkit offered with a slide rule dial. To the far right is the signal strength meter, which reads in standard S units from 0 to 5. The upper large knob is main tuning, and the lower one is band spread tuning. If you're not familiar with the concept of band spread tuning, it's a secondary tuning control that allows accurate tuning of closely spaced frequencies of a radio band. On this radio, the band spread is uncalibrated and has 0 in the middle and numbers up to 5 on either side. At the far left is the BFO control. The way this works is a little unusual. You adjust it to a level where the signal is received properly. It's actually a regeneration control. When receiving AM signals, it's normally turned fully counterclockwise to the off position. But turning it up slightly can increase the sensitivity. The knob does not change the BFO frequency. You do this with the main tuning or band spread controls. Next is power and volume control. 
The band switch selects between each of the four bands A through D. The mode switch has positions for AM, standby, and CW. The mode switch does not actually control the BFO. It turns the automatic volume control off when CW mode is selected. The standby position mutes the receiver. Finally, we have a quarter inch mono headphone jack. This drives the speaker when headphones are plugged in. The headphones are driven directly by the same circuit as the speaker, so headphone volume can be a little loud. Its predecessor, the GR64, was notorious for the plastic front panel cracking around the controls. This did not seem to be a problem with the SW717. The rear panel is made from thick cardboard, presumably a cost-saving measure. On the back is the ferrite rod antenna used only for band A, the AM broadcast band. Screw terminals for shortwave antenna and ground are provided. The switch for the automatic noise limiter is on the back. This is a bit unusual, but typically A and L on these receivers was not that useful and not often used. The power cord is wired in. This one is not original. I replaced the original one with a new heavy-duty grounded cord. Inside, you can see that most circuitry is on a single printed circuit board, which is mounted on a metal chassis. There are a number of coils and trimmer caps which are adjusted during alignment. Some parts like the tuning cap and power supply filter cap are mounted on the chassis. There's a lot of empty space here. The radio circuitry is much smaller than the older tube base designs, but it was still built with a similar size metal chassis. On the bottom, you can see that there is additional point-to-point -point wiring. For a 30 to 40 year old radio, this unit is incredibly clean. For the price, this radio was a decent entry level unit for people who wanted to listen to AM broadcast and short wave programming. It would not really be suitable for amateur radio use except for casual listening. It was not portable and lacked some of the bells and whistles of the more expensive receivers. I obtained this unit at a garage sale in 2009 at a price I couldn't resist. It was working and quite clean. As I mentioned, I replaced the line cord, which was in bad shape. At some point, the rear feet had been removed. I added some plastic pieces to prevent the screws on the bottom from scratching the bench it was on. It did not come with a manual, and I could not find a free one on the internet, so I purchased a copy of the manual from data professionals who bought the right to sell the official manuals from Heathkit. An audio hum problem is common. This is typically caused by a poor connection between the case of the aluminum filter cap and the chassis. Mine had this problem. I added a ground strap and resoldered some of the connections. Another common problem with these units is oscillation on the high end of band D caused by electrolytic capacitor C24 going bad. Mine did not suffer from this issue. I did a full alignment of the unit using an accurate signal generator following the procedure in the manual. Let's listen to the radio on the air. Uh, band A is the AM broadcast band. We can pick up a few local stations that are broadcasting here in Ottawa, Canada. Yeah, another another poor showing for Lefty. He just really couldn't get it going at all. On shortwave band C, we should be able to pick up a number of stations this evening around the uh, 49 meter shortwave broadcast band. We all were in, etc. 
except for the delivering power. Of the <laughs> 我妈和我爸就行了，现在这个不行了，我还要找到父母，父母说的，我们孩子上哪去了，我也不知道。但是，we That concludes my review of the Heathkit SW717 General Coverage Receiver. It was one of Heathkit's mid-range shortwave receivers and was offered over a period of 11 years. For the price, it was a good value and got many people on their start into ham radio or shortwave listening. While not rare, this model is not as common as some of the other Heathkit shortwave receivers. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage amateur radio and test equipment.